Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got a, a ton of content to cover. Anybody who's uh, seen me present knows I try really hard to cram about four hours worth of stuff into an hour time period, and that doesn't always go so well. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get started. Um, first of all, uh, again, introduce myself, David Lover. Uh, I'm Vice President of Strategy and Technology here at Aero FI. Uh, and you know, we've got a lot of, of good information that we're going to cover today. Really talking about how do how do you how do you manage your communication manager? And traditionally, you're probably doing that with tools like uh, ASA, and you know maybe you've enjoyed the lively debates of you know who likes Jedi and who likes terminal emulation. Um, and that's kind of an old school debate that we're going to move to a different new debate of uh, you know how we might leverage system manager to accomplish that. Uh, you know, better, more efficiently. So I'll show you some good uh, good content there. Um, if anyone at any point has any questions, feel free to ask them uh, within the uh, the system. Uh, so within GoToWebinar, you can go, uh, there's a section in there for questions. Feel free to, to pop a question in there, and I'll stop periodically to, to address those. So anything you have, let's throw it in there, and then uh, I'll get to them. And I know somebody's going to ask, um, and so I'll say it now, and I'll probably say it a, a few more times. Yes, we are, in fact, recording this, uh, and we'll have it posted on our website. So uh, for anyone who registered and attended, um, you'll definitely get a link to this where you can go back and review it uh, or you know, you know, provide links maybe to your coworkers who can go see that as well. So yes, we are recording it. Yes, we will post it on our website. So um, again, the topic today, migrating from ASA to, to SMGR, I, I, I think Sarah had, had scolded me for putting uh, acronyms in a, in a title. But I think most of the people who are in this, who live it, you know we're talking a biocide administration, and you know we're talking system manager. Um, and um, uh, so there's some pretty cool things that we can do with this, and it's, it is definitely time to begin thinking about uh, how we might use System Manager to accomplish this. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that we do. Um, in this webinar, what we're going to do is talk about how maybe you've used System Manager in the past. Um, most fairly current customers I talk to um, have System Manager. Chances are pretty good you used it for one specific task, and that was to manage your session manager. Uh, and so that's great. That's awesome. I really, you know, however you got it, um, I'm good with because now I just want to show you what you can do in addition to that level of coolness um, and, and really start taking on more administration tasks. And, I, again, very specifically, I want to focus on communication manager today. Um, so there's a lot of things that System Manager can do, and you know we might pop around and show a little bit of some of the other stuff, but really focusing on Communication Manager, your CM, um, and what we can do with that. Um, we'll get, do a little comparing and contrasting of you know things, day-to-day -day tasks that you might have performed uh, you know previously with ASA, again either Terminal Emulation or Jedi, or uh, you know how we might migrate that and start doing it in System Manager instead. So. Um, First, you know, let's kind of think about system manager as a whole and what we do with that. Um, you know, in the past, like I mentioned, you uh, probably acquired a system manager, uh, maybe reluctantly. Maybe you're like, oh, yeah, okay, it's in there. I don't. I guess I need one. I don't know why. But uh, and you say, oh, well, you need it to manage session manager. Um, yes, you do. Um, there is no other way to administer session manager except through system manager. Well, it turns out there's other things as well. And whether you have started using those other things, that may vary from customer to customer, but um, it's certainly an option. And uh, you know, if you say, well, anytime I have to do a SIP station, and most customers I talk to, even though they may not be going 100% SIP, like us, Aero uh, SI is very much into um, migrating all 100% of our users to SIP, um, and we've, we're mostly done. I think I literally have maybe 24, 25 people left, um, and everybody is SIP, both internally, externally, working from home, you name it, um, we've gone SIP, and it's working fantastic. Um, if you do any kind of Aura conferencing or meeting exchange, that must be done via system manager. You don't have a choice. There, It's got to be that way. Um, 
and that's that's what it is. Same way with presence. If you have any kind of presence server, the Avaya uh, presence server specifically, that's all administered through System Manager. And even if you get into collaboration environment, which has now been renamed, I always have to think of this acronym, uh, it's the Engagement Development Platform. EDP is the new uh, acronym for that. It used to be CE or Collaboration Environment, now it's uh, Engagement Development Platform. But in addition to that, what is currently today viewed as optional administration are things like Communication Manager, any of your messaging platforms, and we're talking again specifically around um, modular messaging, um, aura messaging, um, even some IP office kind of, kinds of things. And I can manage my IP office, and I can even manage uh, certain aspects of my CS1000. So if you're a customer who's migrating from, uh, you know, a legacy Nortel platform, you know, CS1000 to RED, this uh, system manager becomes a great um, intermediary where you can get used to administering via system manager. I skip ASA completely, skip terminal emulation, skip JEDI, go straight to system manager, and then all of a sudden you have an easier uh, transition. Uh, to do that. So again, all very kind of cool things. Now I will tell you that in the future of Communication Manager, um, the next release, the next major release, release 7, is already kind of planned where you have to have a system manager. So um, you can interpret that however you'd like. You know, if we see the eventual demise of ASA, Yes, Avaya product managers have told me that their intention is to end of sale Avaya site administration. Um, and this is a good thing. Um, I, and it's uh, usually when I tell people that, they immediately freak out and they're like, oh my God, this is what I've been doing my entire life. Um, Terra Nova, right? I, you know, and the problem with this whole thing is it's actually not helping any of us by you thoroughly enjoying that. Because um, even though you're, you're comfortable with it, you're used to it, as soon as a new customer comes and looks at that, even though it is a great admin tool, it really is, and it's efficient and you compare it to any of the other PBX platforms out there, it's night and day better than most of those. Um, it's still to it. A new user looks very 1974 mainframe terminal screens. Um, it looks archaic. And first impressions of ASA are really pretty negative. Um, again, if you've been doing it forever, that's awesome. But new customers look at that and say, oh, my God, really good. I think I want something newer than this. Um, and so System Manager becomes a really cool thing to improve the perception of the product and, and what we're doing. Now, the reality is I want to show you that it is actually a better way to admi administer things. So um, again, we've got a bunch of new people, so I want to remind you a couple of items here. If you have any questions at all, just um, ask them via the, uh, the, the chat, or not so much the chat, but the, uh, the questions section, and we can address those. And yes, this is being recorded and will be posted on, the, uh, on our website. So um, again, I'm going to skip through some of these screens. For those of you that are already using System Manager and you're primarily using it for Session Manager, you know these things, right? You've seen these. You know the dashboards. You know the instances. You, um, you can see your alarms, and you can see how many Session Managers you have and where they are, what they're doing. Are they branch Session Managers? Are they core? What alarms do I have? Um, what kind of entities have I created? All those kind of good things. Um, even something as simple as monitoring your SIP firewall. SIP firewall becomes a really important thing uh, in the world of SIP. I, again, it's the more open, truly open standard you get, the more likely you are to get hacked um, if you're not implementing security, um, whether it's your horribly horribly defined passwords that have been in the telephony world forever, like 1234 or the extension, right? You know who you are. Um, those are horrible passwords that, if exposed outside the network, um, now it becomes really easy for somebody to hack in and, and destroy you. Um, and all it takes is one, and it can be really expensive. So in the world of, of security, you always are looking for uh, you know, secure usernames and passwords, and we've certainly done some, uh, I've shown you examples of that with my hacking of Iora um, and you know, some, some solutions to that. Well, one of the solutions is, is to help slow down a hacker, because no matter what, no matter how cool your password is, if you give me enough time, I will break your password. So what you do is you slow hackers down, and what we do is in the firewall, and there's a really great way to monitor the, um, the rules. So in this case, you can see I've got, um, you know, I, one of my rules is to rate limit an alarm 
uh, based on invites uh, you know, being flooded from a single user agent connection. And I have a, a firewall rule that says, hey, if you exceed a certain amount, which just shouldn't be the case, slow them down, make them wait. Um, you know, if I get so many of them, time them out for 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever the magic number is. And you can see I've got some of them that have actually not only matched the rule, but then dropped. Um, that's a big deal, right? Because I have to either look at those and say, okay, maybe somebody is hacking me and great, the system defended me appropriately, or I suck at writing firewall rules and now I'm blocking people that shouldn't be blocked. So I still go here a lot and system manager is the way to do that. And again, it's, it's a hot topic for me personally. So um, that's why I'm kind of throwing it in here, even though it's really not communication manager related. Um, again, we've got our routing, you know, our, our entity links, um, you know, our dial patterns, our route policies, all of these things that you're, if you're in system manager for the purpose of session manager, this is, you know, session manage, one of session manager's roles um, is, is SIP routing, and this is how we do it. Um, this, the second thing that people, most people are like, yeah, I got to add them in system manager, is when you're adding a SIP user. This is a real fundamental difference um, between the way telephony has been done from the beginning of time. Um, you know, if you've had a, a quote unquote PBX for forever, you don't really think of your end users as human beings. You think of them as extensions, right? Everything is done via an extension. Add station this, you know, remove station that. Um, you know, even even our vectors and our VDNs and, and our announcements, right? They're all assigned extensions. Um, in the UC world, unified communications, you got to get away from that concept, and you have to think of your people as humans first, as users who get assigned certain profiles. So this is where we do that, and the system manager is all about kind of using the user name as the glue that ties all of these elements together, as opposed to the old days where you've got this extension concept. Um, it still have extensions, don't get me wrong, the concept of the extension doesn't go away, but it's not the primary um, um, handle, if you will. So what we do is, you know, we build, we create a user, and then we start assigning them stuff. You know, I give them a communication address. Um, I define their profiles. I, you know, and I start assigning different things to them. So again, you're a, you're a human being first, and oh, by the way, you have a, a session manager profile. Oh, by the way, you have, um, you know, uh, a, a communication manager extension. Oh, by the way, you have a CS1000 extension. Oh, by the way, you have a mailbox. Oh, by the way, you have all these other things. So, but again, the key is you're a human being first. You're a user, and that's where system manager comes in to, to create that layer of connectedness between all of the other pieces that, you know, maybe they do, you know. Once you go to CM, yeah, you are, in fact, an extension. Um, and it's system manager that glues all that together to make that work well. Now, um, when we start thinking about, you know, actual endpoint management, and, I, you know, I very specifically, I'm showing you that this doesn't have to be just for SIP phones. So big, huge, enormous takeaway that I want you to have here is um, I don't have to do, I don't have to create users in System Manager only for SIP users. I would strongly encourage you to start thinking of all of your users whether they're SIP, H.323, digital, or even analog as human beings first and get them in as a user and system manager. I can totally do that, and it's, it makes life a whole lot easier for you long term. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that one of the steps we start looking at is getting all of your people um, built in system manager to do that. You might have started with SIP phones, but I'm encouraging you to put everything in there. Now, Back in the ASA days, you know, if we were to manage endpoints, you would have done that in a couple of different ways, right? We would have used JEDI. No, let's forget what JEDI stands for. Graphically enhanced something interface, I think. Um, and again, whether you like that or terminal emulation, that's, you know, the old school blue screen, um, you know, mainframe looking kind of environment. Um, there were two others, right? You could, there was an add user wizard and even an import um, where I could do some kind of bulk uh, importing of, of things. And that was all fantastic, right? It's really good stuff and it worked. Um, and certainly people had their preference. I'll tell you the vast majority of people are doing Jedi and terminal emulation. The vast majority of people are literally doing both. Um, there are very few people that say, no, I'm 100% Jedi and I'm 100% terminal emulation. 
because um, you find different tasks are just easier using one or the other. Um, what I want you to know is that once I move to system manager, I still have that same concept of JEDI versus terminal emulation. And here on the screen, I show you um, more of the terminal emulation mode, which now in system manager we call classic mode. Um, and it looks, feels, smells, tastes exactly like terminal emulation. Yes, it's not the colors. Get over that. Um, but it's still the same layout. It's the same kinds of feature buttons at the top of the screen with enter, cancel, next page, previous page, all of that same kind of thing. Um, and that's good. You know, that's that's great. So if you're, you still love that concept, good. But anybody who's been around for a long time knows that as Avaya added more features from version to version to version, sometimes they would put a new field somewhere where it didn't really make sense. You're like, why did they put it that on page five? That just seems like a weird place to put that field. And the simple answer is there was room on page five. That's why they put it on page five. Logically, it has nothing to do with page five, but they put it there because there was room. Well, what we get to do now is start thinking of, of if I could redesign the station screen. What if I could start from scratch? I still need all the same information, but I need to do it in a more efficient way. Well, that's where we come up with enhanced mode. And so the same, all the same content is there. It's just reorganized into more intuitive um, categories, you know, feature options, button assignments, um, site data, whatever. Um, you know, there's certain pieces of information that are there regardless. Again, and emphasizing, look, my set type is a 4621. That's not even a SIP phone. Okay, I can totally do this in System Manager. It doesn't have to be a SIP phone to make this all work. Um, and so, um, again, I get all of that kind of capability. Everything's in there, and it's good. Now, um, there's other ways, right? Yes, I can do the bulk import-export, which um, is pretty handy. And I'm going to actually switch kind of back and forth here. You can see my screen. I've got my system manager up and running. And just so people know, I am running uh, system manager 6.3.10. So a lot of people always ask, hey, I don't get those. I don't see what you see. I'm running 6.3.10. It's a great release, um, um, good, solid, stable. Most of the things um, I'm talking about here today became feature complete as of System Manager 6.3.8. Okay, So if you're before that, well, you may not have all the things that I have. Um, and you should definitely think about at least upgrading to that. Current release, I believe, is 6.3.12. Um, but inside here, uh, what was I going to show you? I was going to show user management, and I was going to show you the bulk uh, import concepts. And when I start doing um, that, my screen. Um, so if I look in and I go and I manage my users um, under more actions, this actually is a great way. You know, before if you wanted to import people, um, you're like, well, what what format does my template need to be? Um, turns out I can download the actual template um, just as a blank template and everything is good. Um, what a lot of people will do is they'll export certain things and then they'll modify it and then they'll re-import it back in. So either way, it works. We do that a lot for, you know, kind of things that I can manipulate easier if I move it into Excel first and then bring it back in. Um, so, you know, again, giving you that, that kind of an option. Now, what is the most exciting for me is this idea of web services. And web services um, is a set of APIs that Avaya has provided with System Manager, very mostly specific to user administration, that gives us abilities to write separate applications. So again, if I were to show you one such application that Arrow SI wrote, um, we call it Password Pro. And Password Pro is what we use to manage our end users and to figure out what their passwords are uh, within Communication Manager and System Manager, expire those passwords, um, send uh, you know customers the magic emails that they need to uh, to get. Oh, my screen is taking forever to come up. In fact, oh, as it just came up, I'm going to go back in. I don't know why. I'm, see, I just despise Internet Explorer. What if I just do this? But it's much faster. Okay, so in Password Pro, 
Um, we use a single sign-in uh, to get in, meaning we, we just connect to uh, Active Directory in our case. And, um, and this is what we use to, again, expire end-user passwords, uh, to um, magically uh, you know, let end-users change their own passwords, and do all of the things that, uh, that they need. And so the end user just simply sees this, where they can change their their uh, their um, communication manager uh, security code. They can change their system manager communication profile password. But from an administration perspective, I have full control over everybody um, as what we do and how we do it. And the magic of this application is I'm leveraging that API that if I exposed, so I can automate the programming of things through a. a, a, a an application that I built, that Aero SI built. So again, very cool kind of concept. Um, it gets um, again, I, I, we we use that capability a lot to do customized things that a typical um, existing application from Avaya or from whoever may not necessarily be able to do. So um, again, that's the uh, the web services capability. The next thing I want to show you, though, is this idea of flow-through provisioning. And I, I get this all the time. People will say, oh, no, it takes forever to go build a user in System Manager, and you know you have to touch so many different things, and I've got, I've got to add a, a, session ma or a, a session manager profile and a communication manager profile and a messaging profile, and that just takes forever. I'm like, oh, God, you've got to learn new stuff. Um, the new ways of doing this, I can do things like user provisioning rules. A user provisioning rule is something that automates what I want to build and who I, what services I want to provide to users that I create. Um, and again, rather than show you a slide of that, if I just go back to um, you know System Manager and look at this user provisioning rule. So what we do is we create various, um, you know, here are a couple of examples of user provisioning rules. And I can go in and when I say, when I want to build a new user that's in Bloomington, I'm going to pull an extension out of the Bloomington DID range. Um, and connect everything up and, and let people, um, you know, I, assign very defined kinds of things. So if, if I know they're coming from that uh, system, uh, I can identify what SIP domain they're in, what presence domain they're in, um, how do I convert from their seven-digit extension to the E164 number um, that becomes very critical in the new world. Um, and more important is I can go through and automate the assigning of, okay, I want that, that new user based on this, think of it as a template. Um, I want them to be in their primary session manager is my first session manager in Minnesota. Um, their secondary is the second session manager in, in Minnesota. I want them to allow, I allow them to have five simultaneous devices. Here's my sequencing. When it comes to the endpoint, I say go ahead and pick the first available extension within this range. So my DID block in Minnesota is 4563000 through 4563999. And I can say I want them to have a default template. Um, I want to pick a, a, a starting code, security code. Now Password Pro then mandates that they, the user changes that, so the administrator never really knows. I can say give them a mailbox. We're still running modular messaging 5.2. And I say just build them a mailbox that matches their communication manager extension, whatever that is, and our default is to assign them the Intuity TUI, you know, the touchstone user interface, and give them this as their default password. Again, when they first log in, they'll have to change it. Um, their presence, they even get a conferencing bridge out of this whole thing. It all just becomes very automated when I look at this. So um, again, to show you an example of, of this concept, um, when I go back to, um, let's say I go to my, nope, I don't want to do that. When, um, when I click back into my user management tab, as soon as that happens, boy, I don't know what is wrong with my browsers today. Everything is going just crazy slow. Okay, so this is why we use other. Why they completely locked up on me? What the heck? <laughs> okay, so if I were to go back into my user management, 
and I'm going to create a new user. So you can see, you know, the, the typical way we, we would do that. I'd go in, I'd say new user. And unlike where you probably had to do it in the past, um, you know, what I get to do is select, you know, okay, first pick your user provision room. And I'll say, hey, this person is going to be in Bloomington. And um, we are going to go ahead and select that. Now, it's, it's immediately connecting to all of the various databases that system manager is aware of. So it's, it's finding out what the next available extension is. It's logging into, uh, you know, and, and pulling the data from uh, modular messaging to know what a mailbox is. And now I can just go ahead and say lover demo. Um, I can say, let that populate the last name. I can say David demo. And all I have to do is give it a log, the ultimate login name itself, which will be the lover demo. I'll say 25 at arrow si.com. And if I wanted to, you know, I can still go touch all the other stuff. You know, I, I, I could hit commit right now, and it's done, right? Literally, last name, first name, login, done. Um, if I wanted to tweak it, because, again, ev everybody says that every user is different. That's not true. Most of the time, when you're building a new user, I bet probably 95% of the time you duplicate some other user first, and then you tweak them. That's probably what you do. So I can do the same thing. I am going to start with my uh, user provisioning rule that applies a default template, and I can go in and tweak this if I want. So it built all of this stuff. It picked the extension, so you know, the three, five, uh, four, five, six, thirty, forty-four. Um, grabbed all of my present stuff. Did everything it needed to do. Um, even is going to build me a, a conferencing bridge out of my Avaya or uh, conferencing. So all of that becomes a pretty cool thing. And um, if I needed to change it, if I wanted to go touch the buttons, I could go to the endpoint editor and say, well, let's give them some busy indicators if I wanted or something different. And I could hit the commit button after that. So it becomes a very simple way um, to, to do all of the things that you would do when you think about a high-end user. Now, again, even if you're analog, maybe you create a user provisioning rule for an analog phone that is really just meant to be dial tone and no other advanced features. I, great. Create as many provisioning rules as you want that leverage as many templates as you want, um, and everything becomes pretty easy to work with. So um, one of the questions that I uh, have received, so can you write a web page app for the end user to be able to reset their own password if they have forgotten or locked it? Yes, and I apologize if I um, ended up showing you that. So that was Password Pro. Um, that's what we wrote. We wrote a web page that lets the end user log in with their, um, in our case, Active Directory credentials. So I know who they are, and I can say, go ahead and change your password. And they, so all of my end users change their own password. Nobody gets to use 1234. Um, some of our logic that gets put into Password Pro is to say, sorry, you can't use 1234. Sorry, you can't use 123456. Sorry, you can't use your extension. Sorry, you can't use your extension 01. Um, and sorry, you can't use the same password that you used the last five times. So we keep track of those kinds of things uh, with Password Pro and mandate that our end users have good, secure passwords that meet our company's compliance uh, requirements. So um, short answer is yes. You can do this. Slightly longer answer is Aero SI already wrote this. Um, this is a product we sell. It started out just as an internal product that we used you know, for our own users, and I showed it to enough people where they're like, oh, God, please, can I buy that from you? Um, so we had to modify some things, obviously, to make it work more with um, traditional, um, you know, more flexibly with other people, other customers, um, and it's, it works. It's available today. So if that's intriguing to you, boy, let, uh, let us know. Um, I'd be happy to show you a more in-depth uh, demo of it. Now, along with user provisioning rules, which sound really cool, I can do a thing called LDAP synchronization. So again, let me show you a little LDAP synchronization along the way. Um, this is on your tab under directory synchronization. I have the ability to tie to some kind of an LDAP database. So what I did was I went to our Active Directory guys and I said, hey, could you do me a favor and build me a group, an AD group called Avaya 
Quora underscore users. And as people get added to that group, they automatically come over to System Manager. System Manager pulls it on a regular basis and says, hey, um, are there any new users? If there are, um, go ahead and build them uh, a profile based on my user uh, uh, my user provisioning rules. So it automatically gets built and automatically gets taken care of. And so in theory, your moves, ads, changes, your, your user ads and deletes um, are gone. I, I don't need to do that manually anymore. Um, in this case, you kind of see how I connect in, um, you know, what the, the base DN of my LDAP server is, what I, I'm looking for, I'm searching, I personally am searching for a, a very specific group. Um, you got to be really careful about this button called allow deletions uh, because if all of a sudden your Active Directory uh, person gets a little crazy and starts changing the schemas and we start noticing that the, uh, the what's, what's called the GUID, the GUID, it changes, System Manager will view that as a deleted user, delete the user out of System Manager, and then possibly rebuild them with a completely different extension. So as much as I love to say, yes, I can, I can synchronize to your LDAP, Boy, you better be good at your LDAP because if you suck at that, you are going to cause a lot of problems in your system manager. Um, but if you're good at it, hey, I can map in all of the all of the uh, information from Active Directory or LDAP and map it into System Manager. I can even take it and go the other way that once you automatically get assigned an extension, push the E164 number back into the LDAP server. All wildly wickedly cool. Um, again, you just have to kind of pay attention. I, I, I have found very few customers that do this only because they really don't have a good grasp of their enterprise directory and, and the downstream effects of what a, a change could make there. Um, because now that's, that's your official, that is your pure data source and that uh, could get you into a lot of trouble. But boy, if you're good at that, this is so cool it's not even funny. Okay. Uh, let's see, I've got another question. If the station you added needed an agent ID, could you then modify the name field on the agent ID so it doesn't, uh, or does it need to be the same as the station? So, um, question is related to how I might automate um, users and agents. So I still have that exact same ability within the user provisioning rule. Um, and I might even have a slide here that shows this. Uh, right here, in the user provisioning rule under communication manager endpoint, I have the ability to also have it create, um, you know, under the profile type as endpoint, I could also have that be agent. So we're starting to see um, people getting more creative with their profiles. Um, again, if I go back under my user management, um, a very cool thing that very few people even know about, um, but what I use quite a bit uh, in ours, so if I search for lover, uh, you're going to find all of the things that um, that come up related to that. And I'll show you the screen in a little bit. But if I look for my real user, is dlover at arrow si, and I go in and edit that user, you will see. You know, normally the the default communication profile that is used. Um, is typically called primary. And everybody leaves it like that, primary. Well, what they don't know is I can hit new and add a second profile. So for me, I have a Polycom conference phone also sitting on one of my end tables in my desk so that when I have a, a, a group call um, and you know, with people in my office, um, I'll use that phone instead and probably most of you that say, oh, what if a user has multiple extensions? You have no way to keep track of these things. Um, in System Manager, I can simply create a second communication profile. I call it conference phone, and that is the uh, phone number of my conference phone. Same, I can pick all this other stuff. I could, you know, I, and my point, the longer answer of this is um, I could partially uh, automate the addition of um, of the user agent as well. And again, if you view system manager as being the glue between all these things and not trying to do it in communication manager, which to your point becomes a little bit ugly, um, I, it becomes a, a, a definite easier thing to do. So I am such a huge fan of getting everybody in system manager to, to make that happen. Okay. Uh, let's keep going because again, we're 
two thirds of the way done, and I'm on slide 17. Um, the user provision rules showed you all that stuff. Now, the other thing that I absolutely love about System Manager is uh, if I were to ask you, hey, is removing an extension an easy task, yes or no? Everybody will say no. It's never an easy task. As soon as you say uh, uh, remove station, blah, 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 you are presented with a ton of errors um, that say, hey, you know, they still have uh, voicemail messages. You know, their message waiting light is, is still active. Um, we can't get rid of the station until you clear that. Um, or, oh, sorry, that extension is used as somebody's bridged appearance. Or, oh, that extension still has the EC500 programmed. Oh, that, and the extension exists everywhere. You've got to get rid of that before I can get rid of the user or the extension. Well, now, in the magic of, of System Manager, I have these remove options as well, so that when you go delete an extension through System Manager, it can delete as much or as little as you would like. So in ours, I, I check every box and say, hey, when I want to get rid of some user, I want you to automatically find their bridged extensions, find if they're in a hunt group, get their CDR, get their EC500, if they're in a T button, clear the stupid message waiting light, get rid of all of it, delete them. And so now deleting a user is, is literally as easy as deleting a user. I don't have to do all of the other stuff to go with it. So that's the uh, usage options underneath the uh, communication manager element. So again, wildly cool. User agents. Okay. So the question before was, what about user agents? I showed you a little bit of how I could um, tie that to a single user through System Manager. But um, what I can also do is you know, just regular standard old agent admin, right? And if you're familiar with ASA, you know this screen. You live it every single day, where I do their their standard stuff, um, as well as um, you know any of their skills and you know their their reserve skills and all that kind of stuff. And I can use Jedi terminal emulation and import. Have comfort knowing I can do the exact same thing in System Manager. So I can see, um, you know, and add the user agents, uh, do all of that kind of stuff. I can absolutely bulk add agents. I can bulk delete agents, um, name them, do their skills. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about the advanced search capabilities, which becomes just ridiculously easy and powerful to find the very specific users. For example, I want to um, I want to list show me all the agents that have a direct skill uh, uh, you know, level of 82 not level but a skill of 82 um, with a skill level greater than one. Show me all those people and it'll come up. I could select all of them and I could either delete them, I could edit them. Um, a lot of different things that I can do with that. So again, all that same capability. Again, if you really, really like the old goofy looking screen, yes, Classic View is still there. Right? It'll look exactly like it did with your pages, with your feature, um, you know, your, your function keys, all of that stuff. But again, when you go into the enhanced view, it's organized better. It's put, you know, all of these things are put where they need to go couple of things to draw your attention to. The other cool feature about System Manager that exists that has certainly been in the world of ASA is the ability to schedule tasks, right? You, you say, I want to delete Dave Lover on Friday at 5 p.m. because he's getting fired and I don't want to be there. And so I'm going to schedule it to happen and then I'm getting the heck out of the building. Um, Awesome, you can do that, right? The problem with ASA was it required you to leave your laptop up and running because if that's where ASA was, you needed ASA running to be able to actually do the scheduled tasks. Well, in the world of System Manager, it's a server, right? It's it, The server's always running. My view into the server is just a web browser. So now I can do all of those things. I can, I can schedule it. I can commit it immediately, and again, with schedule, it's I don't have to be there. I don't have to have it running. I can truly schedule it at some point in the future. Now, specific to agents, you'll also know that anytime you make a change to an agent, you, it, the change doesn't take effect until you do what? Log out and log back in that agent. Then the skill to, is, is in effect. Now, if you have CMS supervisor, there's a capability within that to do that, that like an auto log out and log back in, but you could never do that with ASA. Well, now I can do it with System Manager. So if I want to commit that task and automatically log out and log back in that user, I can. If I want to schedule it also with the log out, log back in, I can. Or if I just want to commit it or schedule it without the auto log in, log out, I have that option as well. 
it's a very, very powerful way to, to decide how you want to um, you know, make the change, when do you want to make the change, do I have to be there to do it, you know, it's all easy. The other thing that I love about um, System Manager is the bulk edit. Now, I don't necessarily have uh, the ability to go in and, you know, at a, a field by field level, kind of, but I have the ability to create templates. Right, you know, um, uh, contact center agent templates, and in that template, I can absolutely say, "Hey, I want you to have these three skills with these levels, with these reserve levels, blah blah blah." Assign that as a template. Well, now what I can do is select my agents that I want, and if all of a sudden you want to change, you know, twenty, thirty, a hundred agents to have a completely different skill level. Um, rather than having to touch them all individually, find them, select them, and simply bulk edit them by applying a different template to them. So this becomes huge. And anybody who's ever had, you know, 100, 200, 300 agents that you wanted to change all of their skills and skill levels, but they're all being changed to the exact same thing, you know how hard that is. Um, with System Manager, it is ridiculously easy. All I have to do is select them and assign them a different template, and they're done. Okay, so very, very cool, very powerful. Now, uh, along the, the lines of usually what we think of as contact center, but it, as you know, announcements are everywhere, and I have full capability of managing announcements within ASA. It's when Avaya merged the tool VAM, Voice, Voice Announcement Manager, and they just brought it directly into ASA. And you could do all kinds of things. I could add, view, save, delete, backup, restore, broadcast, all that kind of fun stuff. I can do the same thing in System Manager. Okay, I have more capability as well. One of the things I um, use a lot is the backup all. Um, so what I can do is click that, and it will go um, collect all of the announcements across your entire system. And by the way, we're not just talking your one communication manager, because a single system manager can manage several, many, you don't have as many as I can manage, um, communication managers. And all I do is select them up here, you know, this one doesn't show me any because I don't, I only have my one, um, but if I had multiples, I, they'd be available and I could say back them all up and it will, it will save it to the system manager server and then I could go download it and it'll just bring me to the directory where it has all of those and I could just download that file directly. So um, some very, very powerful capabilities that I have related to announcements. And again, the magic is I don't have to view it just as a single communication manager. Um, this happens to be showing me announcements from one particular communication manager, but I have options to do more. Same way with hunt groups, right? Okay, you know, and coverage paths in general. Um, you see those in ASA, pretty traditional. You know, we do that all the time. Um, but now when it comes to uh, system manager, like I said before, where I have multiple communication managers that I could manage, I only have one. Um, I, the entire country that is Aero SI is all running off of a single duplex pair uh, and uh, of, of communication manager servers here in Bloomington, Minnesota. Um, and I can look at all of them. If I had more multiples, I could do it and select them, see them, um, even see the number of rings, which um, that column in, in itself was never available before. Um, and I can manipulate those things the same way we've talked uh, about all of this other stuff. Uh, question, is Password Pro included in System Manager and, or an add-on? Actually, Password Pro is an Aero SI developed application. This, it, it, Avaya's just kind of, uh, Avaya has not provided the kinds of tools that we think is important. Um, and so Aero has developed, Password Pro is purely an Aero product. Um, this is not something you can buy from Avaya or, uh, or from any other business partner. It's Aero. So um, short answer is, again, it's not a system manager feature. It's, it's arrows, which you can absolutely buy, and I would love to give you a demo of it. Uh, reporting. Reporting was actually the last thing, the most recent thing to get added into system manager. So if you're familiar with um, uh, doing reports in, in ASA, you know the screen, right? I, you have a, a bunch of categories of commands. Um, and I can do, ex export them to, you know, in the SAT screen, I can export um, individual fields to a file. Maybe it's a comma delimited file, um, you know, all the kind of miscellaneous stuff that you might be there. I could email it, but technically you're really not emailing it from the system. You're just sending it through your Exchange server. 
So again, if you do anything recurring, you better hope that ASA is running at the time. Um, you know, so it, uh, otherwise it doesn't work. Move into System Manager, I get the exact same stuff. Okay, so this this is the capability that was added specifically with release 6.3.8 of System Manager. I get the same categories. I can pick the same fields, move them over. Um, the beauty is I have more options in terms of the output as well as the destination. So yes, I can still do CSV, you know, comma delimited type files that import beautifully into Excel. I can also export it as a PDF file. So now I don't have to worry about separately PDFing it. Um, I can even save it as an HTML file. So HTML ends up being um, pretty powerful when you think of the various destinations that I can send that to. So like in the old days, if it were running on ASA, you pretty much come into your computer. That's ultimately the only place it's really going. Well, now when I save it local, it's going to save it on the system manager server. Okay, so not on my desktop. Now I can go download it from the system manager after the fact, um, but I can also put it on any registered server. And I list SCP here. Um, I need to expand, expand that because it's, it's whatever storage servers you've registered to system manager. So there's TFTP, there's HTTP, there's, uh, what else? I think SFTP, if I didn't say that one already. Um, it's a lot of different options for where I want to do that. Well, if all of a sudden I start talking about an SFTP server that might be used with my web server, well, think about that. I can now create a report, output it as an HTML web page, output it directly to my web server, and now if you have some business unit that says, hey, guys, I need you to run a report for me every Monday afternoon that shows who my agents are and who's the this and who's the that and blah, blah, blah. Well, and you probably have to do that manually. Well, now I can automate the report, schedule it to be recurring, and output it automatically to a website, uh, you know, an internal web server that you might have, and tell your business unit, hey, here's your web page. Um, and by the way, I can update, because it's so easy to schedule a recurring um, a report, uh, we actually update it every day at this time. And you can pick all of that stuff in the output. So. Uh, becomes, again, very, very powerful uh, to use. So um, let's see, another question. After you backup announcements, can you use when SCP to retrieve them off of sessions? And uh, you said session manager. I'll assume you meant system manager. Um, so um, in theory, yes. Um, what I don't know exactly is to where that file repository is. Um, so I've never done it myself. Most of the things you can, in fact, pull um, you know, your your backups off of uh, off of that. And so in, I don't see why you can't. Um, the fact that I've never done it just says, oh boy, maybe it's some weird hidden directory that only has root access. That that might preclude you from being able to do that. But um, I have a hard time thinking that that if I would actually do it that way. So you can probably use SCP to pull it off of. Um, uh, it's, Again, but you'd have to enable the FTP capabilities within System Manager, which may be frowned upon. Um, so it's possible. I'll say it's possible. I don't know for sure. Uh, the question, another question. Uh, when making a ch uh, station change using System Manager, is it instant or is there a delay? I'm going to say it's really close to instant, but it is a delay. right? When you do it in System Manager, um, it, it has to then go log into Communication Manager. If you have a bunch of people doing things at the same time, it might have to queue it up. Right, it's kind of like the old multi-site administrator, if you remember that product back in the I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, and so it might take a while for it to get in there. Generally speaking, when I make a change, by the time I, I you know, as I'm testing this, by the time I hopped into Communication Manager to look, the change had already been made. So I think it is near instant, uh, but you are not administering Communication Manager directly. Right? It's, you're modifying a database in System Manager, and then System Manager pushes the change down to the various components. So there could be potential delays in there. Um, while we're on that topic, the opposite is maybe more important to, to worry about. Um, the opposite is where if you go make a change in Communication Manager, what happens in System Manager? This depends on whether you have enabled a feature called CM Notify. Okay? And CM Notify, um, it's easy to, to set up, but it's not as easy as checking a box, right? In in, um, 
in system manager if i go into home if i go into inventory um and i look at my communication manager i don't know why my web browser is so slow today this is a go-to meeting thing i think um When you look at your elements, one of the steps is, in fact, to check a box called CM Notify. What is that? There we go. So if I were to go in and I clicked it again, Come on. click it. So if I were to go look at my communication manager, managed element. By the way, it is mostly this easy to add CM into your uh, system manager. Um, there is one particular field in there called, um, or a checkbox called, well, it's, it's term CM notify. I think the, the actual field is something else, now that I think about it. But um, that's step number 17 of the multi-step process. It's this enable notifications. Simply clicking that will not make this happen, okay? It's, there's other things you have to do. Um, it requires basically sharing the system manager security certificate with communication manager and sharing the communication manager security certificate with system manager. You've got to edit a text file on CM, and you have to check that box. If you do that, now the opposite will happen, whereas if you're in communication manager, you make a change within, and I found this to be a, slighter, a slightly longer delay, you know, usually 40 to 50 seconds, um, that change will now show up in the system manager. Okay, but if you don't do this, if you don't enable CM notify, then any change you make in um, in in communication manager directly um, won't get replicated up to uh, up to system manager until you have it uh, specified. Um, and usually, you find that in the synchronization communication system and. Uh, this thing, which probably some of you know, oh yeah, if I go make a change in CM, I have to come here, check the box, and do an, an, uh, an incremental sync. Yeah, that sucks. That's a horrible way to do it. You want CM Notify, um, and CM Notify will automate the individual tasks of you know moving those those managed pieces back up to uh, where they where they belong in System Manager. I will tell you, you really should. Your goal should be to never touch ASA ever again. Um, that's the goal, and, and I admit, for a lot of people, it's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, but if you, I, the more you do it, the more you force yourself to do it, the easier it becomes. Um, and you find yourself in, uh, you know, terminal emulation or Jedi less and less and less. Um, once once you find where things are in System Manager and that kind of stuff. A um, couple of things I want to show you. The other really super powerful aspect of System Manager is first the search I kind of showed you before when I searched for lover. The beauty of that is it searches all of these items. So again, scenario that I know every every single one of you has, has had happen to you. Somebody will come to you and say, hey, um, can, I need you to delete uh, Dave Lover's station. We're going to terminate his employment on Friday um, and can you get rid of that. Your first question will be, great, what's his extension? Because you don't think of him as a, as a user. You think of him as a phone number. And they manager always will say, yeah, I don't have a clue what his extension was. He wasn't all that important to me. Um, I, I have no idea. Um, and so you say, great, well, now i got to go find it. And how do you find it? You probably go into ASA. You do a list station report. Um, you hopefully do it in JEDI where you can sort the fields. You hope there's some kind of consistency between either first name, space, last name, or last name, comma, space, first name. God forbid you do something crazy and put a bunch of characters in there that now you can't find it or it becomes impossible to find. In System Manager, you go to the universal search field and you type in whatever you want, and it will go find all of those things and give you a big old list that I can either view or edit. So still very, very cool um, you know, for, for that kind of search capability. Um, next, uh, in terms of the searching, anytime there's a list um, of, you know, with columns and whatnot, there's a, a field up here called filter, 
Um, and I think the, it's enabled. You click the enable button, and it opens up these fields, uh, open fields up at the top, which are all search fields. So I can say, hey, sh just show me the list uh, where the last name is Lover. Show me the first name of uh, David, which clearly wouldn't have gotten me all of those. Or show me, look for, uh, you know, I could type in 4563507, and it would just show up this guy because it's inside there somehow. So very powerful to do that. And certainly I can just click on a title, and it'll re-alphabetize or, um, you know, I guess alphabetize. Um, you know, those columns based on the column that you clicked on. So so easy to get at data. Um, like I mentioned before about um, context-sensitive advanced searching, where if you want to find a, an agent that matches these kinds of skills and skill levels, awesome. I use this all the time. Again, any t anywhere in System Manager where there's a list, you can see the same kind of um, capabilities. And there's an advanced search that, when you click, opens up and says, great, what do you want me to find? So this happens, I'm looking for the um, list registered zip phones. It, you know, so if you're familiar with the list registered IP stations command, you know, you want to see who's, who's registered. In the SIP world, we do that via system manager. And, um, and this is one where I use, you know, when Avaya sends me firmware that they want me to beta test or we become a beta tester, they're giving me firmware every couple of days sometimes. Like, oh, hey, we've got a you know, new version for you to try. And they want feedback right away. So I have a group of beta testers within Arrow, SI, and that are, they're my guinea pigs and they're willing to take it on and they do it. And I want to make sure that when that firmware comes out and I get it set up and ready, that they need to get that into their phone. So I usually send them, send them an email that says, hey, it's Monday. I need feedback on this firmware by Wednesday. So I'm going to give you till tomorrow night to go ahead and reboot your phone and at your convenience whenever you're not in the call, if it's at night, whenever. It's up to you. You do it yourself. Um, but if you don't upgrade your phone, I'm going to bounce your phone um, by whatever day, you know, so 24 hours later. So what I usually do is I go and I search for the device version containing some firmware, maybe 6.4.0.33. I want to see which ones are registered to eliminate duplicates of, of um, redundant registration. I, I'd say, yeah, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to see the other guy there. And then I simply select all, and I say reboot. Um, which becomes very cool because now I can find out very granularly who I'm dealing with. Um, and, you know, you, we could always do a reset station command before, but, uh, you know, your options were somewhat limited. Now I can search to my heart's content on anything that shows up in that list, pick the ones I want. You know, if they say, oh, hey, there's somebody, Bert fell into a category, and I, even though I don't want to reboot his phone, so I'll uncheck him and I can reboot everybody else, or just force them to unregister, which wouldn't help me for my firmware updates, but maybe sometimes you want to force somebody out of, out of their phone. Um, I can unregister them remotely. So SIP phones are so much easier to work with, in my opinion, than H.323 phones are um, for a lot of these kinds of reasons. But I use this advanced search criteria a lot. Now, I think I already saw a question. Can you run list trace reports within System Manager? That's one of the questions. And yes, I can. And um, to be honest, it's better. Um, so let's remind us how we do a list trace and whatever. List trace station, list trace tack, list trace RAS, list trace, you name it. I don't care. Um, in Communication Manager, ASA, terminal, it has to be terminal emulation, can't be JEDI. Um, when I run that command, what is the biggest pain in the butt about that command? Um, it, you only see a screen at a time. And if you want to get to the second screen of the trace, you push the next page button. And if you want to see the next page, you push the next page button. There is no previous page button. Yes, I could do a list trace previous, right, and get the whole stupid thing all over again. But there's no scrolling up and down, back and forth in ASA. In System Manager, when I go through what's called the element cut through, I can do a list trace station command, and it's one big long list. There is no paginating anymore okay, with, when it comes to that list trace command. So I can issue it. I can um, see the whole thing in real time. If I want to scroll back up, I can go look at stuff that happened earlier. Um, if Avaya or Arrow says, hey, we need to get a, a copy of the list trace, um, there's no doing stupid screen scrapes of every page and page next, next page, next page, next page. I can go in here, do the trace that I need, use my mouse, highlight the entire thing, uh, do Control-C to copy it and paste it into a Word doc or a text uh, doc or whatever, and now all of a sudden I've got everything that I need. 
So short answer is yes. The list trace is absolutely available directly in System Manager. And believe it or not, it is way better uh, in System Manager than it was in ASA. So um, that's a pretty cool thing. Now, this element cut through is actually a cool thing to know because let's say in Communication Manager, you just started, you're trying, you're trying to make the transition and you can't find something. You're like, I don't know where my trunk groups are and I need to do this right away. Again, to, to help you stay out of ASA, you can always go through the element cut through and issue any command that you could ever dream of that you could have done in ASA, terminal emulation, JEDI, doesn't matter, and you can do the exact same thing here. So this is your, this is your safety net. This is the, I can't figure it out and I don't have time to search for it. I just need to do it right now. Great, do it right now, but do it in System Manager and just go to the element cut through. And over time, Again, the hope is that you would, you'll use element cut through less and less and less. You know, traces currently still have to be done there for the same reason that we couldn't do it at Jedi. It's a real-time command. I want to see it in real time. Um, and again, I'm cutting directly through to the element, hence the name, uh, and I'm not necessarily looking at system manager data in this process. So again, good and bad. You better have CM notify, right? Because if I do an element cut through, make the change here, it's not modifying it in system manager. It's modifying it in communication manager. And you need to get that change back up to system manager to, to do it. So CM notify becomes a very, 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 I could add tons more varies, uh, important thing to use uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, mostly last, um, you know, a, the Avaya's product manager for uh, system manager literally talked to users, went through the list with them and showed them, hey, this is what was in ASA and this is what we are doing, how we're doing it going forward. So all the Jedi, you know, cut through supported, you know, add user, you know, the, they kind of explain this. Anything in red says, yeah, we're not moving it out. You know, we're not, we're not moving that capability forward to anything. So printing button labels, it's gone. It's dead. And what I find is nobody uses it here anyway. Most, if, if you are unfortunate enough to have to print button labels, you're probably doing it through um, an Excel spreadsheet or something. You know, nobody uses the, the, the label generator here. Um, and again, if I went through every single one of these features, these blue ones are saying functionality is pending. It came in 6.3.8, which was four or five months ago. It's more than that, six months ago. Um, so the current release absolutely has these blue items in there, so um, it's there. Now there's some um, capabilities like the trunk analyzer, processor occupancy, some call traffic kinds of things that aren't going into system manager. The, the plan is to move them over to a, another tool um, called uh, visual performance fault management, so VPFM, um, which is gonna be more of a via's monitoring or management, uh, not management, um, more of their monitoring capabilities. They're, they're you know, running reports, analyzing, you know, all of those kind of things will not be in System Manager. It will be in that VPFM. So those are some things that if you use them, no, nope, they're not coming over to System Manager. And no, they're not going to be in ASA either long term, right, when ASA dies. So um, you know, if you use that a lot, you will have to look for a different way to pull that off. OK, so um, that's my preza. What I'm going to do is run back and go through some of these questions. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of them. I gotta see where I left off. Um, okay, so what kind of reports are there for messaging? Um, you know, I think I still have most of the main, uh, if I go into messaging. So uh, in terms of reports, reports, I don't think there is. Uh, let's go look. If I go to reports, But I, I, all, and again, um, yeah, so this is where the server, the remote server configuration ends up being, any existing reports that you may have run. So I don't think in the report section there is much related to, um, to messaging. Uh, if I go home, I can still manage a number of things directly within and if I go to the messaging menu item, that will list all of my messaging things that I have. 
And again, for me, I only have uh, modular messaging today. Dun, 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 dun. So I can still go in and look at my system itself, you know, and, and do that. What a lot of people do is, you know, from a reporting, they'll go into uh, more of the subscriber menus, um, where you can add, view, edit, delete, and you can you can certainly search based on some of those things. And I think we'll find out pretty quick here if I can do any bulk um, edits and capabilities. I literally don't know why my web browsers are sucking this much here. Um, okay, so they don't have um, an other option uh, in related to this. Um, yeah, so this shows if you had multiple messaging systems, you know, I could have multiple boxes checked and it would list all of the people that are in there and how they're set up and uh, and what they're doing. I can certainly, um, you know, start doing the filters. Again, probably not the reports that you're, you're, you're thinking of, um, you know, in terms of, hey, show me traffic utilization or show me access or show me some of those other things. That's not, um, sadly, is not in there. Um, do, is there a good document showing how to do CM Notify? Yes, um, there is. So it's, and the only reason I know this is because I did it in uh, one of our learning services classes as a class. Um, if you go to the System Manager uh, Administrator's Guide, um, get the a current one, it is Chapter 26. <laughs> and no, I would never be able to tell you any other chapter in that, in that thing, but I, very, I remember very vividly it's Chapter 26 that uh, shows step-by-step step how to administer it. And I did it cold with a class room full of people on all of their lab systems, and everybody did it themselves. So um, if you follow it step-by-step, step, do what they need you to do, it does work out uh, very well. So that's how you would do your, uh, your CM Notify. If you make a change in ASA in that system manager, system manager update, or make the change back. Um, Yes, so I think that's what we covered, right? Um, so the question is, if you make a change in ASA, does it push back up to System Manager? It's the CM Notify deal. If you haven't got that enabled, the only time it will go from Communication Manager back up into System Manager is when you have your scheduled sync. Usually people have that set one time a day, you know, at, I don't know, maybe 10 p.m. or something. Um, but that's in that synchronization tab um, that we had talked about that we're looking at right here, as a matter of fact, this. So this tells me that um, I have successfully synced um, February 26th. Yep, that is today. So it synced, for us, it synced at, uh, it looks like 2, 2 a.m., roughly, um, and did that. That's the, If you don't have CM notified, this is the only way to get CM data back up into System Manager. And... Um, that's cute for a onesie twosie little thing, but if you have a whole bunch of people still in Communication Manager directly, that will get ugly really, really, really fast and can ultimately lead to database corruption. So my short answer is pick one, stick with it, um, but uh, a, a better way to help you out is to make sure you have CM Notify turned on. Uh, how does this product compare to Avaya's, um, the con uh, Context Center Control Manager? Well, I'll tell you. There is a little bit of an overlap between these two products. So the Avaya Contact Center Control Manager, ACCCM, um, is, uh, it, it has some of these capabilities. Um, for contact center functionality, I think it's tons better, um, meaning ACCCM is better than System Manager. But for all the other stuff, um, there's no comparison. I really, really like System Manager. Now, I'm also trying to tell Avaya, um, you guys got to pick one. Right, either merge the functionality of one of the into the other, but there's no reason why we should have two of these products. Um, because, like I said, there is a little bit of overlap between the two. Um, but if, if you know the system manager people say, well, no, you should only be doing contact center in ACCCM. How many C's was that? Um, and you should be doing all your regular system administration in the system manager. But anybody who has both knows that there's there's more overlap than that. Uh, okay, we covered the ASA deal again. Compare, uh, can you use emulation tools like list traits? Yep, we did, we covered that one. Um, system manager access to changing trunks. Vectors are not open to the operator. Yeah, um, so the question is, can I do things like changing trunks, routing, vectors, VDN? Yep, it's all in here. Um, 
And the beauty is with roles, right? I, we haven't talked about roles at all, but I can create a role extremely granular now to say I want a particular administrator to only be able to touch these extensions in this range, right? We, we had, um, what were they called, user, user profiles, I think, in Communication Manager as of release four, you know, where we had like 40-some pages of very granular kinds of things, but it, it really wasn't. This allows me to go build very specific administrators that have very, very specific tasks, or maybe even the same task across multiple communication managers, because again, you gotta remember, I can have multiple CMs all in here at the same time. Um, so I could do all kinds of things related to that. Um, but um, the specific question was around communication manager and um, you know all the, all the trunk group stuff and because I don't do a lot of trunk group administration, usually that's a one of those forget, set it and forget it kind of deals. Um, ultimately, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's under network. But call, all the call center stuff is in there. But if I go to network first, um, network is, you know, this is where I get all of my, my node names, my route patterns, my network regions, my signaling groups, my trunk groups, right? So I could click on a trunk group and you can see uh, the uh, administration for that. So all of the things that we would think of as, as being network related are absolutely in there. Um, same way with, um, with, my, with my contact center. Okay, so again, here's all, all my, my, my trunk group stuff. Uh, if I go into call center, um, this is where it's gonna show me all of my agents, all of my vectors, all of my VDNs, um, you know, my, my vector routing tables, my variables, my holiday tables, best service routing, all of that. So yeah, I've got most of this stuff in here as menu items. Um, and as a, an operator, um, the, the person that used the term the operator, um, I'll assume that means like a system admin. Yep, you know, that's anybody can have access to that. And I, if you just give them default admin permissions, you're gonna have access to everything. So at some point, you might want to start limiting what they have access to. But um, the default permissions for administrator, um, you know, give you pretty much everything you could want. Um, can you run less trace? Yep, covered that. How about managing your G650s? That's a really good question. Where, are, where would my cabinets be? Did we see that under network? I can't remember if we saw that under network or not. All of my parameters are there. My um, I would think it would be under my network. No, I clicked the wrong button. There we go. Cabinets, cabinets, cabinets. Yeah, I'm not seeing my cabinets. Would it be system? Tenants, groups, options. No, it's not there. Okay, it would be parameters. So I, I, I guess I'm not seeing my cabinets. I, I have a hard time thinking they're not in here somewhere. Again, I totally would have thought it would be under network. So I'm not seeing it handy. Data modules, IP interfaces. So I, I mean, I have, I have just about everything else. I have my IP interfaces, network regions, node names, row patterns, signaling groups. And I'm not seeing my cabinets in here. Ah, I just, I'd have to be. Um, uh, the import export. Somebody's asking. Um, oh, can I have multiple users doing a list trace at the same time? No, you can't because it's still, um, it's, it's cutting through and it'll give you the same error message you know, that you would get if you were directly in uh, uh, Communication Manager. So um, can't do that. Um, there's a question about CDR reports. Um, you know, if, if that was a standard report report, um, it would be in there, but if there were, um, you know, if it was something separate from that, then I don't think that is in there anymore. I think there are some you're gonna pull it directly from the database nowadays. Um, uh, so 
the import export, it depends on which import export you're talking about. For users, it's going to be under um, just the regular, well, let's cancel some of this stuff. Uh, it's going to be under that, that main manage user window under, uh, right here under uh, the other, other options. God, I don't know. Never like to see that. I'm going to close up some of this stuff here. Um, it's under more actions right here. So that's where I would do my, my bulk um, importing and exporting, but that's specific for users. Um, agents would be in the agent space, and all the other stuff would be wherever their list is. Uh, okay, what CM version works with? No, the CM Notify. That's a really good question. I think CM Notify came in release six, something. Um, so six, three, six, two, maybe. Um, and so, yeah, even though System Manager can manage uh, Communication Manager five dot stuff, five dot two dot one, I think um, it the CM Notify is a pretty uh, critical piece to it. Uh, let's see. Sorry, what documents do I need to look at? Chapter twenty six. Um, it's the system, the System Manager Administration Guide. It, you know, if you go to support.avaya.com, go to um, search for Aura System Manager, and it's under the administration. There's only one of them, um, and you should be able to find that. Does System Manager replace the old SUM, which is Software Update Manager Tool app? Short answer is yes, it does. Um, under the inventory capabilities, um, I can now start doing this thing called uh, software management. And so um, all of those things uh, with, you know, identifying all your TN circuit cards, identifying the patches, uh, identifying all of that stuff ultimately um, I have gotten added into software management. Now, I have found that certain versions um, that that capability is broken. Um, so I think uh, 6.3.12 is a good version. I don't think um, the, in, the automatic inventory is working with um, – my browser is just slowing down. Uh, but I can do the download manager software, uh, manage software, the library, all of the stuff that we had in Software Update Manager is still very much there. Do we have a mixture of IP Office and CM and AAM and Voicemail Pro? Short answer is yes. All of that can be administered. Um, so, you know, when I go back to my home screen, um, all of my home capabilities will show I'll have an IP office, voicemail pro, um, some of that. Now, some of those might be launch points into other admin tools. Um, yeah, but it uh, does not like that. I just want to refresh this thing. Um, so uh, as a minimum, it's a launch point, um, or you know, more and more things are being brought in natively uh, into that. Oh, my God. What happened here? Let's get rid of all of that. Even my, my home page. Look how slow my home page is. I don't know what's going on with my home page. It's my whole browser. It's taking forever. Uh, so short answer is yes. Uh, will the web interface go the way of Will the web interface to communication manager go the way of the session manager interface? I don't know what that means. Um, meaning, will it die? You know, will you be able to log into communication manager? I don't know. Um, I can't imagine that'll be a release seven thing. Um, again, as I mentioned before, communication manager uh, version seven uh, or a communication manager version seven is mandating system manager. So I think. They may make that, um, you know, hey, I, whether I, I'm guessing ASA won't be included with release seven. Um, whether or not you can or can't get in behind the scenes, I uh, don't know. So I don't know if that was where the question was headed with that. Um, and endpoints, no idea what that means. Uh, good question. Ipsy, Sealance. Yep. So we we found Sealance. 
uh, and MedPros, that's under the IP interfaces. Um, but I didn't see cabinets. I just, I, it has to be in there somewhere. I, I have a hard time thinking that it wouldn't be. Uh, we usually do a save trans at the end of the day. Do we still need to do this for any changes we make in System Manager? Again, the beauty is if it's stored in System Manager, that's good, and it does get pushed down to uh, Communication Manager. Um, if you were to take a power hit, yeah, it's probably a good idea to, you know, just like any of those, maybe go do that sync. And um, we saw on the synchronization page there was an option to do a, uh, a safe trans following that synchronization. So same thing holds true that we would have had before. Um, you know, when in doubt, save. Save often. That's, I think, always a good thing. But the beauty is the fact that it's in System Manager means it's the offline database. Um, and so it, it, it'll have that kind of capability. Now, what about uh, non avi conference bridges? No, nope, you're on your own. Sorry. <laughs> um, the old, you know, System Manager is, is for a VIA product. Um, there are no other launch points in you know to manage uh, uh, out of out of system manager. So if you have Synexus conference bridges, um, you'll have to use their tools to accomplish that. I'll be honest. For that reason, you know, there's you know you know Aero SI. We have a number of different vendors from Microsoft to Avaya to Cisco to NEC to uh, Mitel. Um, and even when it comes time for messaging solutions. And, you know, when there's uh, options, you know, even, you know, I, I could do an AVST voicemail. That would work great for us. Um, I, ever since this idea of user provisioning rules where I can automate the creation of the mailbox, I tend to lean towards having a, an Avaya solution because now I can build the entire user end-to-end -end with three fields I showed you. First name, last name, login name. And that's why I use the via aura conferencing is because I don't have to do anything. It's it's magic. It's I, I build the user and it builds all of the other stuff. So to make uh, admin life so much easier, I tend to lean towards you know an Avaya solution where I can uh, for my core Avaya users. We got a whole bunch of questions here. Uh, actually, the last question. Um, Please removing. Yeah, so the, the command, um, you know, the, the list usage command that we try to go find everybody. Again, a couple of different places. I, I will tend to use, um, as, as one way, I tend to use that, that uh, global search field up at the top. Um, right? Remember when I was, we were looking at that field up here, um, you know, showing I can kind of search that, in my opinion, a better list usage. But, um, you know, point taken of if I'm still looking for individual extensions, I will still tend to go down to uh, my communication manager. I will do my element cut through. And when I do that element cut through, then I can, I can issue any command in the universe. Um, so even those other things that we were talking about, you know, if I want to, um, once this opens up, you know, so my command, I like before. You know, so even even if I don't have a menu item for a cabinet, understand I can still do a list media gateway, right? And it will list my media gateways. So if I see I've got uh, a gateway number twenty five, I can absolutely go in and cancel, um, and I can say display media twenty five, right? So I, again, this is even though there may not be a menu item for those other things that I said, where is the cabinet stuff? Where's my G650? I can still do it in System Manager. I just might have to go to that element cut through, but it's all there. So same deal. If I want to do um, list usage uh, 4563507, am I doing that right? I never use that command. Nope, it's an invalid entry. So it's probably looking for what station? Four, five, six, three, five, oh, seven. Is that what it's doing? I never use the command, so I'm clearly sucking at that. Um, but what would I do if I didn't know the command? Hit help. And I can see all of my options for what that would be. Oh, extension. Okay. Extension, four, five, six, three, five, oh, seven. So short answer is yes, there is a, an equivalent. Um, and I can just do it. Anything you can't find, again, your element cut through is your safety net. Just go there and you know, try to search for the rest of the stuff later. 
So all of that is good. Yep, same way with statusing the health. All of that stuff is good. Um, so we're, we're in good shape. Um, love the questions. Hopefully that helped. Hopefully that got you comfortable. I know we went over, but uh, I think, um, you know, based on the questions that were asked, I think we hopefully it was time well spent. We still have the vast majority of our people here, so it must have been pretty good for you. Um, again, boy, if you have questions, comments, thoughts, love your feedback. If you like this session, you know, shoot me an email, dlover at aerofi.com. Um, if you hated it, tell me that. Just be nice. And, uh, you know, we can do that, too. But um, uh, really good stuff. And would love for you guys to get more involved with, uh, with using System Manager. It's probably a good idea to get it current. Um, if you've got an older version, you know, 6.3.10 is a great starting point. Um, 6.3.12 System Manager is, I think, latest and greatest. Uh, but certainly Aero SI can help you with that. Um, if those of you that were interested in Password Pro, love to show you that. Um, we've got uh, a couple of cool customers that um, they were failing their security audits, um, and Password Pro helped them get uh, help them pass those security audits. So uh, both internal as well as external. So a uh, very cool thing that uh, we can help you with. With that, I want to thank everybody for joining and um, have an awesome uh, rest of your day and week and weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining, everybody.